This is chapter 25, paired samples. A lot of times you'll see in this chapter before and after results. It doesn't always have to be. You could look at twin studies to see um, IQ differences between twins. And if you notice right there, we're talking about a difference. And when we talk about a difference, we're only talking about one column. Because when you look at the before and after, you're looking at the difference, how something improved or how something decreases or how something changes. And to do this, we're actually just going to run the t-test. I'm going to scroll down here a good bit. Let me scroll down. Click in here. And when we get to the data right here, all we're looking at is a difference column. So right here, we have the difference between the inner and the outer time for a skater. And we just analyze this column right here. There were 17 paired samples. And we actually take the mean of the differences and the standard deviation of the differences. This will give us the t-test. This is just a t-test. And we're going to look at the mechanics of it. It's very, very, very similar. Let me scroll down to the test right here. We can cover up this part right here once again. We just need to look at d-bar on top. D-bar is the difference. This minus um, delta is the change, which we usually set this equal to zero, so ignore it. D-bar over standard error of D-bar. Well, in our previous equation, let me scroll right over to here. In our previous equation, scroll this, we had seen Y-bar minus mu naught. In this one, it's D-bar minus zero. What if mu naught is equal to zero? We'd just be left with y bar on top. And then over here on the bottom, we have standard deviation of the differences over n square root and standard deviation over n square root. This is the exact same formula mathematically. And if you notice, it gives us a t statistic with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Running, the test for this running this test for this chapter can be done with t test in the calculator. But the important thing to remember here is that we have a new assumption. We have here the randomization independence condition, the 10% condition, the nearly normal condition, and finally, we need to make sure that the samples are paired. I don't know where it shows on the slides, but I want to state clearly that the fourth assumption for this is that there are paired samples. So going in here to look at some of the results, we can actually do this on a t-test. So scrolling down here, scroll down. I think the results are going to be right here. This t-test ran right here is actually a paired test ran on the difference column. So you can run it on the difference column and get the results. And here's our test statistic. And that's pretty far away. It doesn't actually give you the test statistic. You could go through this chapter and actually run these results and get them. But if you notice, the p-value down here would be very small. If we did the two-side test, the area over here would also be very small. It looks like we can reject for the less than test and for the does not equal test. So we have that we can run tests with this once again. And here's the results up here from our test. It was 8.5, negative 8.5. Let's scroll back down to here. We had a hypothesized value of the difference being 0 and we found out that it was negative 8.5. So with this right here, go to your calculator and see if you can enter in these results under t-test and re replicate this and actually get the test statistic. This is great practice right now to go to t-test and try to get these same results. The confidence interval is constructed the same way as with previous chapters. We see here a confidence interval for the true difference between these paired means. And it does not contain zero, which suggests that there is a difference. Let's scroll back up and look at the formula real quickly. The formula, once again, has the difference from our sample at the center and has a test statistic used to create it. We get to pick T star, and then it has the standard error. This is the way all confidence intervals for our class will be constructed with the sample statistic as the start. Then the margin of error is composed of the critical value, the T or the Z, for the certain confidence interval, and then a standard error at the end. There's three parts, sample statistic, critical value, and standard error. After the plus or minus is the margin of error. This can be found under t-interval under the stat function on your calculator. Give us a try.